Hey everyone, I'm Jill Santa Croce and I'm here for Lions Television with Sammy Adams. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. And uh, my first question for you is what do you think you would be doing if I hate college didn't become an internet guys? <laughs> uh, what I would be doing? I don't know. I mean, I would sort of look around at my friends and I'm like, hopefully not that. Like, maybe I have a, I don't know, the desk job's terrifying to me. I pro I don't, I really don't know. I, pro I might just be in Europe traveling for like a year that turns yeah. into six, seven, <laughs> <Good point>. ten. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what would be your advice to aspiring artists? Um, like what do, you, what do you wish someone told you? Well, it's, I don't know, I, I wish I sort of knew more about it, um, but like use everything available to you. Um, the internet is such a crazy tool for people um, in any type of entertainment. Because you can connect with people, you can make things, and like more importantly, it's like if you have something you want to push, and something that you love, you know, people can see that, and people people understand it's like a natural, very genuine thing that you have, um, and they want to support it. Also, like if people find out about you, and there's like a little bit of a buzz around you, just whatever you can to like keep that swell coming in like keep it because people hold on dearly to things that are like popular before they're like in the media and blown up so get it get it while you can you know um, and just love the stuff you do if you're making music because other people are telling you to make a certain kind of music and it doesn't feel right shut it down it's not worth it in the long run you'll be doing songs that you don't really like so do what you love you know that's good advice and then um what is your favorite part about performing for college students? Um, wow, so many different parts. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I think the main thing is the environment um, and just like the excitement and energy from people. Like I remember when there was a long hiatus of not putting music out after sort of deciding we're not going to sign, and it's like the fact that you can come out on stage and people are still going like. Eight wild crazy it's like this is it's like the best feeling in the world um and like weirdly like singing songs that haven't been out for that long seeing people like know every word is also like a big shock because it's like it's just cool it's, it's like you never really thought anyone would care that much um so it's pretty cool yeah it's rewarding because good word sure well thank you for joining us no i'm jill thank santa you. croce i'm here with sam adams take care you guys gotta like drastically cut into the next interviewer. Like, <laughs> so first question is, you've released two successful EPs, one in 2010, one mm -hmm. in 2013. Why was 2016 the perfect time in your career to, re to release an LP? <clears throat> um, it's a good question. EPs, LPs, singles, it's all like, yeah. it's all sort of such a crapshoot now. Um, Cause some people, you know, have one song and they can ride off that or a couple of singles. Um, I think it was more put an LP out in 2016 for the fans. Mm -hmm. um, really, like, just to pay, you know, our fans back for being so loyal and sort of just, like, resilient through all the things we've gone through mm -hmm. um, and just, like, sticking with us. But also it's just probably, like, the biggest example of like music I'm really proud of mm -hmm. um, yeah. in and out of major labels you know in and out of indie deals working with my favorite producers I was able to finally like cultivate what I wanted to be my LP which is like such a special feeling yeah. so um, we felt like before summer was perfect because it rolls into the summer because spring is oddly going by yeah. like this <laughs> even though this weather is not chill <laughs> It's chill, but not it's good not chill. But yeah. <laughs> Bad chill. Um, but yeah, I think it was just timing, you know. Um, it's perfect to go out and play stuff. I love playing new stuff for new crowds just to see yeah. what the reaction is. Um, so yeah, basically just a timing thing and, and to pay the, uh, pay the diehards off. <laughs> um, so second question. Um, how has your music style, music, your musical style, excuse me, and even your genre evolved since 2010? Um, when you released Boston's Boy, and how would you describe your style today? Um, yeah, it's it's sort of changed. Um, we've also we've always had like our, and I say we like me and my team. Yeah. Um, we've always had our like you know ears and hearts in different places like in terms of musical style. Like 
we loved dubstep and we yeah. loved future house like way before it was big so I think like mixing and trying to make as many types of music as you can is cool because like genres really only exist on iTunes like yeah rarely do I see like a SoundCloud thing that's like hip-hop rap it's like you know no one really cares anymore if it sounds good it's awesome um, and if it sounds bad it's not awesome <laughs> um, but yeah it's I think how do you describe my stuff it's just very it's I mean it's electronic but at the same time it's just a big mix of of my favorite types of music I mean sometimes I'll throw like a weird country classical rock hook mm -hmm. on like a hood trap song so that's fun to me you know mm -hmm. um, and then last question you grew up in Cambridge mm -hmm. and in some of your songs you reference Boston did growing up there have any influence on your music and like how you write yeah absolutely um, growing up in Boston was great because I could like take you know public transportation anywhere yeah walk around the city. Um, <clears throat> I had a lot of freedom to just sort, sort of go do what I wanted as long as I was, you know, somewhat safe or not safe. <laughs> um, but yeah, it definitely has a lot to do with my music just because of how I was raised and, you know, a lot of the early songs are like cut in my parents' basement or cut in the attic and or cut in weird places in like Nantucket. So it's all like sort of, the first album was very like Massachusetts, Boston, sort yeah. of center it. Yeah. Um, and also just crazy because I was this Boston kid who was, you know, from a middle class family who definitely didn't think I was going to become this or anything close to like playing the amount of shows that I do. So uh, it was, it's awesome, you know, it's sort of a testament to the city for, mm -hmm. for influencing me, but it's such a great place. The people obviously are hilarious mm -hmm. and just classic. So um, Boston definitely has yeah. a lot to do with, with you know, just sort of raising me, so obviously raising my stuff and music too. Well, thank you so much. No problem, no problem. You're listening to 91.3 FM WTSR at the College of New Jersey. I'm Mackenzie here with Sammy Adams before the spring concert. So, my first question is Long Way comes after signing back with the independent label first round. Uh, so, did you have um, any more freedom to make the album that you really wanted to with an independent label? Um, yeah, you know, like, sort of reverting back to, like, the original sort of production deal slash team, um, it's just way more hands-on for the actual artist, so, like, yeah, you get to pick your track list, there's some pushback on some things, but it's easier than fighting a bunch of presidents and chairmen for what you want to get out. Um, so it was really nice to have that and also just put music out that I've been making in the last two and a half years with Sony. Um, just because fans have seen it on like social media and when it never gets put out, it's like, where is it? But it doesn't die, so you stay patient. <laughs> All right, well, so my next question is, you've had eight years of experiences since you burst it onto the scene to work, uh, to work into this album. Right. And a lot of that revolves around being young and going out. So did you find that as you continued to write songs, your narrative, like the content changed as you got older of what you wanted to sing about? I mean, you'd think so, right? But um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say, um, I'd say content changes depending on sort of what you've gone through. Um, most of the most of the stuff that I've experienced in the music industry has been so either like just like just right away like right after putting something on YouTube or you know sort of touring without like any real LP out um, so I think at, I think at the end of the day like you grow up with your experiences like when when you know terrible stuff happens when great stuff happens it's all like incredible material to write songs out of um, so yeah, I guess it's I guess it's definitely a little bit more mature, but you know, the badass sneaks out a little bit <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> All right. So my last question is: You sing "We Are the Ones" from like a devil's advocate point of view perspective of like this generation's mm -hmm. complex shallowness and obsession with material goods, while there are bigger issues going on. So does that stem from your political science and college background? Um, and it, like, how have you used like what you learned in college to kind of bring into your music? That's a really good question. Um, that song is sort of just like, it was like sort of a mix of frustration and learning stuff and sort of getting screwed over and getting back up um, while sort of this, the undertone of it is like everyone takes themselves and all this stuff so seriously when like 
you know, life would be so much better if, like, you know, you keep your head up and you move forward instead of dwelling on the past, which is sort of what I wrote the song verses about. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's so crazy to be on, like, a tour bus and a bunch of planes going everywhere and seeing, you know, people, like, run into each other because they're on their phones. Because um, when we started, like, there wasn't really, like, iPhones. I remember I was, like, a Blackberry guy like, all those years ago. So, I, I don't know. It's It's a... It's a really like, I'd say from the political science side of it, like you have to be aware of those things and be aware of, you know, different cultures and different things. But political science wasn't that hard. At <laughs> it so it uh, so no that. college degree is useless. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> not that. Only when they screw you out of like one credit. And then it's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. No